time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back, Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We got Brian Falconer, co host. In the studio. Hello. How's it going, brother? Man's doing good, doing good, bro. So, what do you think about this time of year? <clears throat> like, I, it's it's just crazy to me. You know what I mean? You jump in the Thanksgiving, and then bam, bam, it's automatically getting wound up for Christmas. Christmas. Mm-hmm. Everybody's hyper. Everybody's tripping <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> it's like it's it's, it's uh, i think stress levels go up a lot not me i remember uh gabrielle was born it was the first christmas for her she was born in june so it was that december <sighs> i was chilling i went i went shopping on the 23rd <laughs> i was like man i ain't getting caught up in all this craziness man it's just too much man too well, much i don't get caught up in the <sighs> shopping because i don't go shop yeah I, well i had to she was at home and I'm the one to pick the nice gifts, so <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm I don't. A gadget guy, I don't so. do the shopping. My wife does all that, yeah. and she doesn't go shopping. She <laughs> opens Amazon, and that's where it comes. <laughs> that's from. where it comes from. It was just, it was to me. It's just something about nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's another day to me. It's another day, you know. People, well, it's just the reason for it. <laughs> he wasn't born on the twenty fifth, so we can go on with that lie. So it's just all about commercialism, you're forcing you to spend more money, and that's what I don't get into. I'm like, Psh, I'm tired of this, man. My wife asked me yesterday, "What you want for Christmas?" I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't care. Give me some cigars. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. You know, other than that, I, I get what I want throughout the year. So I. Don't bother me. Yeah, and for me, it's like if I need something, oh, yeah, I'm I go it. buy it. Yeah, if I gonna... don't need something, I'm probably not going to mm-hmm. buy it. Tell the truth. And one day out the year is not a reason for me to lose my mind and go try to find something. I was just like, <sighs> so I want her to tell me so I can do it with Miss B. Do Amazon, right? <laughs> Have it delivered, and there it is. Won't be a tree in my house. None of that stuff. I stopped that tree stuff a long time ago. You don't have a tree. Negative. So what do you have? Nothing. You have zero nothing. sign that no, it's Christmas. Nothing. No lights, no tree, what no nothing. What about Thanksgiving? Nothing. No turkey? Will we have? No, no, I mean like decorations? No, no, no. no. So you're an anti-season guy. Yeah. What for? I mean, you're not a you're not a holiday guy. There's something else I can spend that money on. Well, I mean, I'm not arguing with yeah, you. Something else I can spend that money on. I'm not, I'm not, it's just not me. It's not. For what? <laughs> yeah. To For remind what? me that we're going to have turkey. Mm-hmm. To or... remind me that I got to spend some money. That's what it is. Right. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, you you just you just a bar humble. Yep. <laughs> you just call me what you want to. I'm not I'm not getting over it. People, people kill themselves over this stuff every year. Why? So, so are you having family in? We were. For Christmas? We were. And so you don't put up a tree just to be no. festive? No, no. No, the family is the most important part. The tree ain't gonna do nothing. I know. I know. I'm asking. Yeah. No, I'm not doing nothing. I've never done any of that stuff. When I go to, when we used to go to my mom's house or my grandmother's house, uh, before I moved to Texas, I wasn't about the tree and all that other stuff. But did they have a tree? I'm trying to think. No, my mom had stopped that stuff. My grandmother had. The last time I remember a tree was when uh, I was in the 70s when they used to have the aluminum tree <laughs> with the light up under it with the different colors. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was when I was getting Santa stuff then. But now, nah, right? I don't, I don't remember my grandmother having a tree since the 70s. Really? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, my grandparents died way, way back. Mm-hmm. So I really don't remember. Like, I don't remember having a Christmas tree at my grandmother's house since the 70s. Yeah. In the 80s, my mom was still had it because my sisters were younger than me. I was going from, uh, uh, what is that? I was going to say middle, but it's not middle, junior high school to high school. So with me, I was like, I was telling the truth. I was like, man, there ain't no damn Santa Claus coming down. My sister was like, who else? Like, let me show you where the gifts are. <laughs> And I take them down in the basement over there in that corner that was covered up with the blankets. Crying? Yeah. Oh, okay, possibly. Then I got in trouble for that, but I was like, just the truth. You gonna whoop me for telling the truth? And my mama looked at me. She just had this look like, ooh, 
I just want to knock you out. And but how old were your sisters? They, Because uh, I'm six years older than Janine, 10 years older than Rashida, 12 years older than Erica. So they were young. So you ruined it for the young yes. ones? Yes. The truth. What a dick. The truth. Mom and pop buy these stuff for us. So, okay. All right. Well, let's flip it around, though. Mm -hmm. So, did you ever play the Santa game with nope. your kids? Nope. Never. I tried to tell them from the beginning. My ex-wife was like, I don't do that. It's like, I pay for this. Ain't nobody coming in. We don't even have a chimney. So, how are you going to get in the house? He has magic. Yeah. He had the magic. If, if I'd open the door. Hey, hey, no. <laughs> he In his spare time, he's a cat house burglar. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the projects, bro. <laughs> he knows how to get in. Yeah. He just can he leave. <laughs> right. So no, man, nah. Uh uh. I, I would buy a lot of gifts for my kids. Yes. I would buy a lot of gifts for them. But as far as that Santa Claus and the rest, I'm like, you know Santa Claus, I'm Santa Claus. It's <laughs> Gabriel looked at me like, what? I'm Santa Claus. I'm buying all this stuff. And my ex-wife was like, you are just terrible. No, I'm not. I'm telling her the truth. We we had a thing where we bought our kids three gifts apiece. Mm. And it was, and they and they, they got to pick uh -huh. from categories. And the categories was read, write, and want. Mm. I can dig that. We were going to get you to, you were going to be read. reading something. Something to write. Something yeah. to write. And then. One a gift, one. Of, yeah, right. one gift is one, and that's how we did it. Yeah, nah. Mm -mm. I listen. I tell them to give me a list. Oh, this is for Santa. No, it ain't. It's for me. <laughs> and I go to Tars Us. Me and Jeffrey were real cool. You remember the uh, giraffe? The giraffe. Yeah, yeah. Me and Jeffrey was real cool. So I go in there, just buy all this stuff and come on. And I wouldn't even. I wouldn't take the time to hide it. My ex wife would be like, "Oh, I got to put it here." I got to say, "Yeah, you got to put it here." Because it was up to me. We just wrap this stuff and just put it down. She's like, "That ain't." Well, what, I, what what did y'all do with it? She hid stuff. I know, but if you, why didn't you wrap it and put it under the tree? Because you know, our custom was the tree was empty until Christmas Eve. Oh, really? And uh, when you went to bed, there were presents out there that we said we were giving to each other. And then when you woke up, all the rest of the stuff was there. <laughs> That's that's the but there was no Santa. But there was no Santa. So I was Santa. Why why would I have to you know why? put it and all it, out that morning? Here's all the truth to it also. Because they were like, Well, what kind of cookies does Santa? I was like, I like peanut butter. Yeah, but so but, they had to put out peanut butter cookies because they were for, it was me. But why didn't you just put them out always? I wanted to. But my ex wife, she she wasn't on that. She but, wanted to try to keep that fake illusion that I'd already told the truth. So what are you doing? You just lying to him. Well, you're making me work. <laughs> making her work on Christmas Eve. Oh, cause, yeah, because I was I was the one who had to put everything out. Right. I had to go put everything together and put it out. So I was up all night long. They come in there. Dee! We got presents. I was like, as long as you didn't say Santa brought you. I'd that. be like, go back to bed. <laughs> That's the way I felt. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. That's the way I felt. But no, go out there and let them play with their toys for about two or three hours, and it's okay. After we ate, time to go back to sleep. Take one toy in the room with you. Time to go to sleep. Yeah, you know, my kids never did the whole getting up at the butt crack mm -hmm. of dawn. Mine did. And so that was nice. Like I would usually you, my kids were getting up on Christmas morning like this 8 30. Is, this is how weird it is. I, I I didn't believe in Santa at a young age. Like how old? Uh, I'm gonna say about six, seven years old. And just let me just go ahead and say right now, Orlando, sorry, bud. There is no Santa. <laughs> there is no Santa. But uh, it that was just me. And I, I asked my mom, I said, to prove it. She's like, Well, what do you mean? I said, if he doing all this stuff going around every night, when do he use the bathroom? And my mama got quiet, and she couldn't say nothing. So that 23rd, 24th to the He 20th, just hangs it out the side yeah. of the sleigh. Well, see, she didn't think like that. <laughs> but hangs his she butt me, over the edge. She woke me up Christmas morning and took me to the bathroom. And on the back of the toilet was a, was a little Volkswagen car. She said, see, he do use the bathroom. And I looked, I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> so I will tell you that we did the whole Santa thing. We did. Oh, nah. yeah. And... And I sold it. Like I, I can sold believe it. it. I can believe it. I photoshopped Santa in our oh, house. Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. I was like, look, I got up in the middle of the night. Santa was here and I got a picture. Nope. Oh, dude. Nope. I mean, it was like, nope. Anybody would have believed nope. it. Nope. Not happy. If you would have saw the picture, you would have thought Santa was <laughs> yeah. real. Nope. I know he's not real. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, man, shh, forget that. That's why I'm asking my son and my daughter. I said, what y'all going to do this Christmas? I said, first of all, Alana's only one. So she's really not going to understand it. 
Bryson is he's not he's just months old. He ain't even gonna be a month. He well, he'll be a month old. Yeah, he'll be a month old. No, he won't because he was born this month. Luke will be a month old. I said, they're not going to understand this. I said, so but when they get like four or five, what are you going to be? Oh, well, uh, I said, yeah, because you know the truth. What are you going to do? You going to tell them a lie? And my daughter, that's uh, my youngest daughter by Max, she's like, dad, I ain't telling no lie. As long as he want to believe it, he can believe it. The day he asked me the question, I'm going to tell him the truth. I was like, I love you. <laughs> I love you. But are they going to go through the charade yeah, until he the, asks? Because the husband, uh, well, not the husband, but uh, my youngest daughter's uh, uh, fiance, he wants to be, he wants to continue that facade. And then I think Brian just wants to do it because of Alana, the, his daughter. He wants to give, you know, that smile and stuff. I was like, but dude, tell her the truth. You doing this. You the one out here playing with electrical wires every day so you can buy this stuff once a year. Come on now. But you do that all year long. All anyway. year long. Well, I'm saying. So, but but what I'm, is today? What's what's so different about the 25th? Nothing. Santa Claus came. Get the hell out of here! Santa Claus didn't come. It's a lie. I understand your frustration. I understand part of your thinking. <laughs> I don't agree with it a hundred percent, but I also don't disagree because, like, you know, for me. I was cool with all of it until they started getting a little older. And I was like, all right, we're, we're done with the whole facade, mm -hmm. the, the jumping around, having tricks, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, it, I, I, here's the way I see it is it ain't hurting nothing. I got, it's a lie. And okay. when I sit back and is that you never told a lie? I try I try to tell my kids not to lie. So why would I lie to them? And that's the same thing with the Easter Bunny, the Two Fairy. No, no, I was like, Yeah, I gave you that dollar. And he looked at me, I was nobody, like, hey, nobody, nobody, nobody hey, came in here no, and gave you that. Nobody ever believed in the Easter bunny. <laughs> No, you know you what? Come on, running around here come believe. on. You got kids running around here believing in the Easter bunny, dude. I don't think so. They, I, they think dude, there's they leprechauns do. on, you know, Irish Day. What Irish Day? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what is that? Uh, uh, St. Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't play that up neither. <laughs> well, right. But I'm just saying, so, Easter Bunny, the, the leprechaun. Yeah, you, got, yeah. you got people uh, making their kids believe this stuff, man. And I'm not one of them. I've never been one of them. And you know, My part, and know part that of that, coming. part of that, I respect. And then part of it, I'm like, well, you know, you you take away some fun stuff that what fun? So they still gonna get the toys? Yeah, but you're taking away the make believe. What make believe? It's a lie. Make believe is a lie. I disagree with that. How? I think make believe is a lot of creativity that I don't stifle creativity, but I don't want you to believe that a white man is coming into our house. Who and says the, he's white? Because that's where they, they, all they saw was white Santa Claus. I've seen black ones. Yeah, I have too. And you try to explain that to him. Well, which one is real? Both of them. Uh, because see. when he comes down my chimney, he's white. And when he comes down yours, he's black. So why is he black now? What happened? You're at, his, at your home. <laughs> and they're still not. Why is that? He's magic. Yeah, right. And he ain't real. He's one of all of us. <laughs> and he ain't real. <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I, I don't think that I'm not you're going wrong, down that trip. and I don't think that you're right. I'm not go I didn't go down that, that road. I went down there for a certain amount of time, and I was like, nah, mm -mm, nope. And I think Gigi, which is the youngest, she was three when I told the truth to all of them. So if it affected anybody, it affected her, and she didn't right. trip off of it. She didn't trip off of it. Well, of course not. A kid <laughs> is not going to flip out on you because mm -hmm. you told them something. From then on, it was like, Daddy, I want this for Christmas. <laughs> Daddy, I want that for Christmas. Okay. All right. You know who doing this. All right. I'm cool with that. Right. I'm cool with that. But ain't no magical man going to pop. First of all, ain't no man going to pop up in my house, or your mama going to have a problem. She going to have a problem. Who is? <laughs> Their mother. Why? Because if a man pop up in my house, what are you here for? Well, if he's got a big bag with toys. Yeah, what toys? Where you get them toys? Where are my toys at? I, I got one for you. See, that's the problem. He brought that toy. I got that one for you. <laughs> yeah, he brought that toy. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> no, I'm, if I'm your Santa, I'm just going to hand you a cigar. Look <laughs> that's what I got for you. That's a Look blessing. what I got that's for you. Toy. Come that's on a now. Blessing. You know Santa's real. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> that cigar is real. <laughs> but your ass got to go. <laughs> nah, bro. Mm -mm. Flying reindeer, yeah, okay. I mean, what's what's wrong with that? They ain't never seen a flying reindeer. 
No, I've never seen and they one. Never, they never will. But I've never seen in person Charlie Brown. Yeah, he ain't real neither. Right. But is it, uh, should I not see, you, be allowed to see that's be analogy. Around? That's an analogy you can't bring up right now because we know you that. You don't the like car- Charlie Brown? No, because the cartoons that we watched, we knew they weren't real, but they've changed cartoons now because the children started believing that the stuff was real and they were doing the things that they were doing. That's why, that's why you don't have the Looney Tunes, the same Looney Tunes as we watched. I don't, I don't, I don't know of any kids that oh, did. Watch, dude, dude, you tell me a kid that watched Looney Tunes and then went and killed somebody. It's enough of them out there. The same thing with wrestling. They thought that they, what they were doing in the WWE was real, and they were killing their brothers and sisters. So you don't think they should have guns in Looney Tunes? I, I had, I didn't have a problem with it. I, I taught, didn't have a problem. I taught with my, it. I taught my kids that, that that's not real. You shoot somebody, they're not coming back. I didn't teach my kids that. My parents didn't teach me that. Because I just they, knew that. Yeah, they didn't have to I didn't teach us need that. Need someone to explain it to me. Same the same way you don't have to explain to somebody that if you go to McDonald's and buy a damn coffee, it's hot. But you had a motherfucker that spilled the shit on herself and then sued. Well, it wasn't. First of all, she wasn't an mf'er. Oh, she she's was, a father fucker. She was. She was eighty. She still was a father fucker. She had children. If you saw the gruesome pictures she didn't she didn't sue for 80 million dollars she sued for medical and that's it and the people or the jury or whoever made the amount they awarded her that but the point is she knew it was hot you have to do certain things with it I waste coffee in my. If I wasted coffee in my lap, I knew it was a mistake. To, now, if the if the uh, person working at McDonald's handed it to her and it fell before she got control of, hell yeah, McDonald's is liable for that. But once she put it in her but hand, did you know that the coffee machine that they had in that particular shop was malfunctioning and it was fifteen degrees hotter than all other coffee? Fifteen degrees is not going to burn you any worse, any worse oh, unless oh, it's oh when it's two eighty five is no difference from three hundred. Yeah, but coffee's at 185, not 285. That's 100 degrees. You said 15. So that's right. 185 to 200. It's right. sti- there's no difference. 185 would have gave her the same burn. I'm a medic. 185 would have gave her the same burn 200 degrees. I, I, I think as a medic, you wouldn't know that information. Yes, you do know. You have to know that information between so, so first degree, what, second degree, and third degree burns. What, what causes third degree? What temperature range? Anywhere, anywhere from uh, two hundred and up, because now it goes, it goes below the the, the, so the dermis if it and was the epidermis. Supposed to be to one eighty five, and it was fifteen degrees hotter. That goes into what you're saying is third degree and wh- burn. And one one eighty five will give it to you also. It'll blister it up to the well, point. You where said two hundred. So, <laughs> what range is third degree burns? They say two hundred, but one eighty five will do the exact same thing. So it's actually lower than what they say. Mm-hmm. Everything is. So why would it, it would seem like it would be higher, nah. not lower? Nah, nah. So what if it was two seventy five? I mean, one still- one seventy five. Would that be third degree burns? Depending on where it hit, because you have certain forms of tissue that will that will not burn as deeply at one seventy five. You can you can get it shit. People get into fucking uh, what's the name's almost at one fifty. What's one fifty? Oh, you mean like a hot yeah. tub? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I think I think the mm-hmm. hottest hot tub is probably gonna be maybe like ninety five. No. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not an expert on hot tubs. Well, I you know what? Let's ask Siri. She knows. Hey Siri, she's a smart ass. Hey Siri. How hot is the water in a hot tub? 100 to 102. Yeah, so, yeah, 150 would, dude, that would fry you. You had to get off of there. It was picking I, up your word. I don't know what, like, what temperature cooking me, but I know when I cook a steak at 130 is when you're cooking a steak. Yeah, the out, uh, external. Right. But no, the internal. I use my thing, and when it says the internal is 130. And is it pink still? Yes, but it's cooking. Brown Brown is when you go, well, which is one, which is what do they call it? Well, well done is when it's burnt all the way through. That's at 160. So if you put a human in a hot tub at 150, you're going to be medium well. Yeah, medium well. I've seen them at 150, though. I didn't get in, though. Uh, you have not ever seen a hot tub at yeah, 150 unless you were at some kind of satanic cult where they were cooking <laughs> people. 
Wasn't cooking people. Oh, well, yes, they were. <laughs> if the, you had people. people in a hot tub at 150, people. you were cooking people. I try to remember what what is the temperature of my on the water at home? Do you have a hot tub? No. Oh. I'm talking about for my uh the uh your cook hot hot water tank. Oh. I know we have ours set on 110. 110. And like it's steaming coming out. <laughs> my wife loves it at that temperature. She the hotter the better. I can't I think stand I, it. I, I like it at like probably 95. I don't even want it at 95. I'm good at 95. It's too hot. No. To me, it is too hot. So I'm saying the 15 degrees makes a difference. Yeah, from. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. I'm just saying. I'll leave it alone. Well, that's not fair. You can't leave it alone. Because, yes, I can. Because with one degree, you go from almost freezing to freezing. Because at 33, it may not freeze, but at 32, we know water will freeze. All right, here we go. Most adults will suffer third degree burns at 150 degrees. <laughs> so I know they didn't have a hot tub unless they were cooking. Yeah, they might have been cooking them then. You were, I mean, I don't know if you ate there, but you would have been served no, up some human roast. Uh, Just saying, 150 degrees is third degree burn. So. I don't know what, like, do they have levels of third degree burns? I'm trying to remember. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's one, two, and three, but do they have like 3.2, 3.8, almost four, but there is no four, so we're going to do 3.9? As I know, a sauna is anywhere between 150 and 195. That's air temperature. Still heat. That That's the same thing as being in an oven. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I've been in a sauna before. Me too. And it's I mm-mm. it's it's hard. But it but when you're breathing that air, oh god. It's like they have a lot of humidity in there. You know what I mean? It's hot. But I don't think I can't take that. I don't think you could cook in a sauna like you could in a hot tub. You know what I mean? It's like putting a chicken in a sauna versus putting a chicken in a crock pot. It's not the same. At least I don't think so, but I'm not a professional chef. You you don't let people tell you that when you're out there on that black. What is it, the Blackstone? Oh my, uh, is, it, is it called the Blackstone? I don't know. I'm asking you. <laughs> I think it is, it is. Blackstone. It yeah, is Blackstone. Dude, I haven't cooked on that thing in like eight months. Why not? It was hot enough still outside to cook. Oh, it was too hot. Yeah, I Shit, mean, you really, was out there cooking when it was too hot. A, a couple of times. <laughs> I mean, but dude, when it gets to be over 100 degrees, I just don't want to yeah. be out there. And we had a lot of days over 100 yeah. degrees. Yeah. I mean, if it's nice out, I like to light up a cigar, pour me a bourbon, and get out there and do some cooking. But when it's 105, I don't want to be standing over a 230 degree burner. I just, I just, it's a difference for me here because it's the heat without the humidity. And it's, I, I, it's just different. For do me. you like it better, or do you like, or you dislike it more? I I kind of dislike it more. I'm, maybe because I was just used to humidity. Yeah, coming from where I was, but it was like when I first got down here, it was like God, this heat is something else. It's just dry heat. Well, and the thing about it is, like when you're in the places where it's humid, it's not normally over a hundred degrees. It's just so freaking hot. With that humidity, that it feels like it's a hundred and forty degrees because you never quit sweating, and that's the thing people get the the myth, the myth about up there in the St. Louis area. We get over a hundred degrees. We get over a hundred degrees for for a couple of months, but not but not, not like not, here, but where it hey, was continuous for ninety days, right? So not fifty two days oh, out of ninety. God, that was oh my Jesus, that was. Because like even in Houston, normally it's in the nineties to you know mid nineties and to ninety eight, ninety nine, sometimes a hundred. But here, it's just a hundred every, every day, uh, and it gets old. Man. But it's just it's a difference. It's a difference. But in the end, I just believe that you can do it a little bit differently, and that's just coming all the way back around to. The Santa Claus in the sea. Because <laughs> we Here got way Brian. off of that. Here comes Brian. <laughs> right way down off. Brian's lane. <laughs> <laughs> way off of that. <laughs> that was a rabbit hole. For real. So, that kept anyway. branching off. Uh, let's tell everybody what we're smoking. Well, I was smoking a Padron 1926. 
and was that a number one? It looked like a number one. Yeah, it was. A it was number like one. a six and a half yep. by mm-hmm. fifty two. Yes, sir. Correct. Yeah, that's a nice stick. Correct. That's a very good stick. And now, then you're fixing to light up craft twenty twenty two payback. Man, <sighs> lovely stick, bro. Lovely stick. I love rubber craft. I yeah, do. you really do. I do. You are a. I mean, I would. Love you know, they have like the weasels. Uh, yes, sir. I'm a. I'm gonna be a weasel. You're not a weasel. I'm a bee. No, you're not ever going to be a weasel. Why? Because of everything you got to go through to do it? You're the Roma. <laughs> you you are the, let me think of the right term here. Oh, Lord. I, did. I think I just set myself you up. You are the Roma maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Why maniac? <laughs> oh, God. Because when you get one, you look like a man. I'll accept that. <laughs> you get all mm-hmm. excited. Very. Especially depending on which. And I tell you what. Oh, damn. Are, are those five by fifties? Because they look a little bit mm-hmm. longer than five. They are. Are they five and a half maybe? Five and a half by fifty. But oh, I'm guessing. I, I don't These know. But the- that is a good stick. And do you think about that. This is December... 12th mm-hmm. and, you held it that long and i got that like may, may 15th yep yep in may so amazing you know what <laughs> i wanted to save the whole box for a year we knew that wasn't gonna happen but hey <laughs> he made it six months <laughs> i've still got more in the humidor i'm down to three i have three left and i got two two left I was uh, hanging out on a herf. You don't know this, but we've been doing herfs. Some uh, guys from the Discord and from the uh, Patreons, and we've been playing poker. Oh, okay. So we get on the Zoom, and we have a herf like normal, but then we do like another screen where we have poker stars, and we're playing poker. So all I can tell you at this point is if you want to make money, then all you have to do is make sure Orlando shows up. (laughs) Why? He (laughs) loves to go all in, and I've never seen him win. Wow. Not learning from it? Well, Well, I'll put it to you this way. The first week we played, he went all in three times, and it was against me all three times, and I took <laughs> all of his money. And then last week, he comes back, and his very first hand, he, he, like, he bets 2000 I raise it 4000 and then he goes all in. And then I went all in, and he was surprised when I had a boat, a full house. Yeah. And it was like, dude, your very first hand. And you're broke. And you're broke. <laughs> you're broke. <laughs> you know, they give you free money, but yeah. they you only have so much. Yeah. So then Orlando can't play. He just has to watch. Wow. And we make fun of him. <laughs> They're tired of the rest of the games. <laughs> hey, but if you like hanging out and smoking cigars and playing poker, come by the Discord. We're going to be doing that pretty regular, getting together and smoking, having bourbon, and playing cards. It's a good time. Uh, I'll see. I, I mean, you know, I know you don't play poker, but uh-uh. you should try it. It's fun uh, just to hang out and take Orlando's money. <laughs> <laughs> that that makes it worth it, makes it, it right worth there. It. Yeah. <laughs> did did it show his hand? Uh, he. I think he had. He, he either had a pair or two pair. <laughs> and he went all in <laughs> on that. Even I know, because <laughs> with two pair, three of a kind beats that, right? Yeah. S- <laughs> yeah. Because it, what does it go up? Uh, you have high card. Yep. Now I'm talking about uh, pair. High card pair. Okay. High card first. Uh-huh. So I mean, if nobody has anything, whoever has the highest card wins. And then it goes to a pair. Uh-huh. And then it goes to two pair. Uh-huh. And then it goes three of a kind. Okay. And from there, I believe it is uh, straight, straight. Uh, flush, uh, a boat, a straight flush, uh-huh. and then four of a kind, and then, of course, a royal flush. Royal flush. Okay. So I may have missed one. I don't think I did, but that's pretty much it. But, you know, you don't even have to. You don't even have to know exactly because the machine's going to do it for you. Got you. 
just gotcha. you should know that <laughs> two pair go <laughs> is not going to win <laughs> with all in, okay? And, and then, you know, what's funny is when it flips over and it shows I win, he's like, oh, I didn't think you had anything. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Playing, he's playing. He's being an asshole. No, <laughs> he's a poker player. <laughs> hey, you know what? What's that? Sometimes it was like the other night I was playing and Zeka beat me on a hand, and I, he didn't hardly have anything. Uh -huh. He beat me, and I had less than that. <laughs> I was like, well, sometimes you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> No, bro. Uh -uh. But uh -uh. we have a lot of fun. Hey, uh, tonight's show is a special show. And wow, did we take a long time to get here? Uh, we're going to do our top 25 cigars of the year. And I don't know how Bryant did his, but mine are not in any order. Last year, I did them from top to bottom or mm -hmm. bottom to top. Yeah. And I'm not doing that this year. Okay. You're just giving us 25 of your. I got best. one bonus. So I'm doing 26. <sighs> Overachiever. <laughs> Change the rules at the last moment. I'm not changing the, the rules. Dude, you said 25. You didn't say 26. I I know. I did 25, and then when I counted them, I had 26. So said, one well, had to I'm go. Not, nope. Not taking any out of there. If they made the list, they made the list. That is a cheater, man. You can't beat a house. <laughs> nope. Oh, wait. I thought you said you can't beat the house. No, you can't be the house. I'm always the house. Nah, that's the problem. <laughs> I'm always the house. Anyway, uh, before we dive in, uh, let's talk about our sponsors. Yes, sir. We got Tabanero Cigars. Yes, sir. And I smoked two earlier today. And let me tell you what, if you're not smoking Tabanero Cigars, you got to try them. Look down in the show notes. You'll show, see show, a link for Tabanero Cigars. You can go by their website, check them out. And I mean, they've got... Good cigar. Good. I like the way you said that. Good. You know, my cousin messaged me the other day, and he's like, hey, I was fixing to order me some cigars, and what would you recommend? I was going to buy uh, probably like 10 Tabaneros or something, and I was like, sounds good to me. <laughs> You're not going to miss that with, <laughs> with that one. <laughs> and, you know, he is a very new yeah. cigar smoker, mm -hmm. and he likes the Connecticut's, like and he good. just started smoking the Sun Growns, yes. and I'm like, dude, that is a very good journey for yes. you to start with. Yes, great starting point, great starting point. Absolutely, and then, you know, he's my same cousin that just bought what, a the, Case, Case Elegance Octador. Yes, sir. And I thought it was so funny because he's like, hey, what kind of humidor do I need? And I was like, here's the link. Yep. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. And he's like, yeah, I found one I'm going to buy. It's the Octador. And I was like, well, here's a code. <laughs> you want to get 10% off? off? Yeah. You know, I mean, he bought a $200. That's 20 bucks. Yep. And so uh, Case Elegance, Tabanero, if you're looking for great cigars mm -hmm. or if you're looking for a quality humidor, yes, not some piece of crap. Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm trying to think, do you know of another brand of humidors that makes quality? No, Like, what's a brand name that you I know? don't know. I don't I know, know. I only know of one. What's that? Ashton. Okay. They make real high end. But you know what? <laughs> they are very <laughs> pricey, too. <laughs> So you're going to pay. You're going to pay, pay, pay. Yeah. I picked out a Ashton humidor about five years ago for my brother-in-law, and it was like 450 bucks. Mm. And it was super nice. It, I mean, it was quality, but I mean, it, it didn't hold any more cigars than what your humidor holds. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Got and to. you got quality. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, I mean, to me... I, I mean, Ashton makes quality yes, humidors, sir. but wow, what I get for Case Elegance is going to be way less money and just it's as good a quality, quality, if not better. Yes, sir. So, and, and you know what? They've got prices across the board. I mean, they got a sixty dollar humidor. Mm -hmm. That's that's a quality sixty dollar humidor, right? Yeah. If you're if you're looking online and you're looking at you know. Forty, fifty dollar cigar humidors. Wasting your money. I mean, you might as well wrap your cigars in money. Yeah. Or just be better off with Tupperware. Oh, absolutely. hundred <laughs> yep. percent. 
I mean, if you're not going to buy a Case Elegance, then put them in Tupperware because mm-hmm. you're going to be better off than yeah. putting it in a piece of crap. That's correct. That's correct. We've all unfortunately gone through it, yes, the crappy I have. humidor. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. I, dude, yes, I have. I, I bought a pretty one, and you know what? It wouldn't hold humidity, and I thought I was I thought I was doing something, something wrong. wrong. Yeah, and the whole time. It's the, it's the product, not you. Right, because, I mean, you know, you think, and you know what's funny is I used to think that I could build one. I'm glad I never did. <laughs> Because I didn't know anything about humidors. I can see you. I just thought, you know what? You make a wood box. And put cedar in it. Well, I was going to make it out of cedar. Mm -hmm. But what I found out through Case Elegance is you don't give it any room to breathe if you do that. Well, I don't know that. You know, I think if I just make a nice wooden box, I got a good humidor. No, sir. No, sir. And then I tried to make one of my own giant humidors. That was a disaster. (laughs) Leave it to the professionals. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) So if you're looking for cigars or humidors, or they've got other stuff, too. But I call it the the man stuff. Yes, sir. Swag. But uh, they got it all. But check down the show notes. There's links to both. And then uh, I guess we'll just dive in. How do you want to do this? Do you want to do you all of yours? Yeah. And then all of mine? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going first. Well, you know, you just said, yeah. Number 25. <clears throat> the Monte Cristo number two. Which one is that? Yeah, I gave you one. I, is it, what color is the band on it? The gold and it's gold and black, I think. Okay. I remember. Okay. Number 24, Aladino Patton. Okay. Nice. <laughs> that yeah. was the one that uh, the Riverman gave me, and then I got another one. Mm-hmm. Oh, my Jesus. Delicious. 23, My Father Le Bijou, 1922. Okay, okay. Never fall on that. 22, correction, that was 23. 22 is the Monte Cristo White Churchill. You didn't like that one. No, I didn't really care you for that like one. You didn't like that one. 21. Placencia Alma de Fuego Conception. Now, which one is that? I got to bring it up because it's the... Uh, the Conception? Uh-huh. What color is the band? You should have this ready. Like, all I had these the pictures, pages. But I, I, I have a list now. Look at that nice burn you got on yes, that sir. aroma. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, oh, by the way, I'm smoking a aging room, Pura Seppa. Pura Seppa? Mm-hmm. I've never had that one. What the heck? Well, you know, you are on an Android. Go on with that. <laughs> that. That is something that we were talking about earlier. Go on with that. <laughs> Go on with that, bro. It's the orange. Orange and white. I don't know that I've had that one. Let me see the picture of that. I don't think I have. Oh, that's, that's red. That's not orange. It looks... Uh, that cigar's on my red, list too. Red, yeah. Red. But now I gotta get back to my list. There it is. All right. Says, well let you get back on your twenty. I'll stop at twenty, then you do five. You okay. Do it like that. Okay. Number twenty was the Monte Cristo nineteen thirty five anniversary Nicaragua. The one that you gave you. Yeah, and you like it, I like also. That's my first five. All right. Uh, my first one is going to be the uh, Fonseca by my father's. Yes. And it, I like it in the five and uh, three quarters by 42. Mm. Great freaking stick. And it's right around the $10 price point. The next one is the Aurora, the first 20 years. And I had it in the six by 46. Dude, that is a great cigar. I don't know if I had. I had that while I was down in Atlanta. Oh, Oh, dude, that was good. That was, yeah, that one definitely good. (laughs) Uh, The next one for me is the La Galera 1936 box press. And it's in a five uh, 5.5 by 46. And it's about 10 bucks. The next one is the Casa Cuba Double Trace Corona which comes in a five and a half by 44 and it's about 12 bucks. And you know, that's a Fuente cigar yeah. that costs a Cuba. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's my number 19. <laughs> oh, that one is yep. really, <laughs> uh, that was four for me. Yeah. The next one is the Cavalier yeah. B2 Viso Jalapala. And that's with the gold on there. 
yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The di- it's like a gold yeah, diamond, diamond on it, yeah. but it's the only one that has like a gray band. Because this oh, is I know the, which one you're talking about now. Yeah, it's the only one that they're using with the Halapala blend in it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's my first five. Nineteen, y'all already heard the Casa Cuba. Okay, okay. <laughs> Eighteen will be the Sin Compromiso. Okay. Seventeen, Hoya de Nicaragua and Antone- Antonio, which is the Connecticut. <clears throat> Sixteen, Undercrown Ten. Fifteen, the Aladino Cameroon Elegante. Say that one again. Aladino Cameroon Elegante. Good smoke. That's the next five. Go ahead. All right. The first one on the list is going to be the Arturo Fuente Hemingway. Mm. And I like it in Damn. the six by 46, which I believe is the signature. Oh, the next one I have on the list is the Crowned Heads Yellow Rose. For real? Oh, yeah. Mm. You know Jay's got yeah. them back in the shop. By I didn't the know way. he had them back. Yeah. Oh. And they're going fast. <laughs> Uh, then I'm going to go with the Romacraft Neanderthal genetic deformity. deformity. Yeah, I can see you with that. That's a 4.2 yeah. by 52. It's about 10 bucks, 12 bucks. I think it's 10. <clears throat> uh, then we're going to go back to crowned heads with the Mildias mm. 6 by 46. And then we're going to go back to Arturo Fuente for the Don Carlos number three, which I like the five and a half by 44. Okay. That's a really good one. I'm, in fact, I got one of those aging. Okay. <laughs> I think that's five. For yeah. Me. Okay. Go for it. 14, the Alec and Bradley Kintsugi. Remember the one? I know which one it is. Yeah. I don't care for it. I know. <laughs> I, you know what's funny is I've seen it on other top 20, top 25 lists, like and I'm it. like, that's not, but, you know, it's not to me. I got you. Number 13, the Perez Carrillo Pledge. Number 12, the Roma Craft Baca Series. Okay. It doesn't matter all. which one. Yes. You don't care what it is. I don't care which one it is. It could be a pencil dick, <laughs> and you're going to smoke it if it's, it's a baka. <laughs> if it's a baka. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Now, where am I at? Number 11, Liga Provada H99. Mm. And then number 10. And the only reason it's at number 10 is because it's hard to get the Roma Craft Wonderlust. Okay. For me, the next one on my list is going to be the Tatuaje Faustos, mm. and I love it in the six and a half by 48. Mm. Like that, that's the perfect Vitola for that cigar for me. The next one is the Southern Draw Firethorn. I, I haven't had that one. Oh, that's a good one. That's okay. a good one. It's a. Uh, Where can I get it? I don't know. I'll let you know. Because yeah, you didn't get it at I, the I link. Think, that's no, what I'm I think yeah. I got it in Lubbock. Okay. Okay. And so the next one on mine is the Padron 1926 series, the number 35, Mm. which is a four by 48. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like 14 bucks. Mm. So 14, 15 bucks for a 1926. That's good. That's real good. And then the next one was the Placencia Alma de Fergo which you already named yeah. that one, but I I did it in the 550, and that cigar is about 12 to 14 yeah. bucks. And I messed up because I went too far, so I'm only going to do four this time. <clears throat> okay, well, I haven't finished that. You haven't? Yeah, no. I thought you did. No. That was five? No, that was one, two, three, four. Four, okay. The next one on my list is the Padron 1926 number one. Number one. That's a 6.75 inch by 54 mm-hmm. box press. I like the Maduro. And I think that was about 30 bucks. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, that's five. Now, I, I got to do four because I did six the last time. <clears throat> number nine comes in at the Arturo, Arturo Fuente Opus X. Number eight is the 60 by Rock, Rocky Patel. <laughs> no, you're not going to like that. <laughs> that was number seven. Number six. It's the Alec Bradley Fine and Rare 2021. I started to put that one on my list, and then I didn't. Okay. Just because I knew it was going to be on yours. Because <laughs> I smoked a lot of them this yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> I smoked a lot of them this year. <laughs> uh, the next one on my list is the Oliva Siri V 
135th anniversary mm. edition. Mm. And, you know, they say it's a 5.5 by 54, but, you know, it's it it's shaped like a baseball bat. Gotcha. You know, it starts small, gets regular width, and then I think it stays that regular width all the way up. So, to me, it looks like a bat. Anyway, then my next one on the list is the My Father, Lee Bijou, 1922. Mm. And, you know, I prefer the Petite Robusto at four and a half by yeah. 50. I do. That is a knockout cigar for me. Then I go to the Fierro Tego Metropolitan Host, and that was a five and a half by 44. I've never smoked that one either. I smoked that one at TPE, mm. and it was given to me by uh, Michael Herklock, oh, okay. the owner dude. Okay. Uh, then the next one is the Tabernacle number 142. And I had that in the 5.2 inch. No, sorry. Five and a quarter by 46. And that's about a $13 cigar, mm. maybe 14. I think that's five. Yeah. Is that five? Yeah. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Nope. I got one more. Uh, Green Hornet by uh, Blackwork Studio. I haven't had that either. Oh, you haven't? No. Have you had any of the, uh -uh. you know, no they. Blackwork, no. I haven't. Well, you know, they have them at the league. I did not know that either. Killer B. <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't. Man, I'm at, so, that's why I love to leave. I can go find. So you know where the my fathers are. Yes, when sir. You first when you walk, walk in, in. Uh -huh. you just go straight to the left on that same shelving and you'll see all of it okay you know where the dissidents yes. are mm -hmm. it's in that same area okay and then that's uh that's five okay my top five <clears throat> for 2022 starting off at number five was the roma craft 2022 <laughs> great sticks i also didn't put that on my list because i knew, knew you was gonna have it my number four was the one that you just said that i leave a v series 135 and, and for the price on that oh, cigar, dude, dude, yes, ten dollar stick, and it is a great stick, man. My number three, you already said, I was smoking one at the beginning was the Pedro 1930, uh, 1926 series, the Maduro, the number one. Right. Love it. This is number two, and the reason it's number two is because I can't get, I can't get the ones that were the original release. I had I smoked as many as I could this year. Now they have the that new one that came out and I, it's just not the same to me and that's the CAO Amazon Basin. So that's your number 2 yes, or my who? number 2. Okay. Number 1 Pedro 1964 anniversary Maduro. Nice. Okay. I'm down with all those. Uh, for me, my, uh, and like I said, I'm not doing it mine yeah, in mine order. Know, I know. So the next one on my list is the AJ Fernandez San Latano Dominicano. Good stick. And I smoke it in the six by Good 52. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I'm going with the Agonorsa signature selection torpedo six by 52. Mm -hmm. And then I'm with the padrone anniversary 1964 hermoso <laughs> <clears throat> i smoked one earlier today yeah. uh <clears throat> and then i have the casa cuba divine inspiration mm, that's your stick oh <laughs> <clears throat> yeah carlito <laughs> send me some of those baby that's your stick. <clears throat> yeah and it comes in a five and a half by 44 mm. perfect mm. and then we also both had this one on our list it is the Monte Cristo 1935. Huh. I, huh. you know, just for Monte Cristo to make your list. And you know what? <laughs> Even though it's the honorable mention one, <laughs> I bought those two different times. Yes, you did. And so I also want to give a precursor. We agreed before we did our list that we would not put our sponsor cigar companies That's on the list because. We didn't want them to say, oh, you're, you're just, just saying, saying that, that because yeah. they're your sponsor, even though I promise you multiple cigars that both of them yes. make would be yes. on my top 25. Mine too. <laughs> I don't Mine think too. that you can have a true top 25 that doesn't have a if you don't, well, if you don't include sticks that you smoke daily. daily. Yes. The Tabanero and the McAuliffe's. I mean, daily, weekly for sure. Uh. I mean, Man. I can promise you that I don't go more than two days smoking either one of them. Mm. 
I fall into that same, and then I'm upset because the Grande Bowl is is leaving, so I'm losing my sick my stick. But there are others that they make a, that are just as great, that are just as flavorful. What are, you, are, what are you missing? What the, are you losing? The Grande Bowls that uh the what's the name that I smoked the uh, uh Grande Bowl. Oh oh oh, the Sumatra. Sumatra. I'm sitting. I, the coffee was on my mind. I'm like, <laughs> yeah yeah. I know you love the Sumatra. Oh man. But it's leaving. You know what I say? Buy all I can. Buy all you yeah. can. And That's what I'm doing. I mean, from what I hear, they're going to be discounting yeah. them to get them out the yeah. door. So I'll be down to what, the ones I'm buying now. I'm not getting discounted. So when I get more, hopefully they're at that discounted you, rate you'd by you'd the end. you be calling up stores be like, hey, <laughs> what kind of deal can we, we make? Can get I'll buy 10. Right. <laughs> Send them. So anyway, guys, that's our top 25 list. And I mean, you know, when you think about <clears throat> like, I don't know if sure. I don't know exactly how you came up with your list, mm. but like my list was not just like what I would think would be the best of the best. Mm. My list is the best 25 that I smoked this year. And that's the way I look at it. And so you're I mean, you're going to find a lot of cigars that are just as good if not better but maybe they're two times three times the cost because yeah. i mean i'm not out there smoking 40 50 dollar cigars mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. so i basically based it on what i smoked and what 25 cigars i thought was the best that i've smoked gotcha gotcha and that's i just based it off because i i take pictures of all my sticks and certain ones that I love, I put in a different folder. And that's what I did. I just went back through that folder. And I looked and I was like, yeah, I love this one. And I, this one, oh, this one tastes like that. Ah. It was just pulling them out of that separate folder. So, And that makes it good. Yeah. I do kind of the same thing, but Apple works different. So <laughs> it's way better. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Man, don't forget about the McAuliffe Minute. Oh, I'm not forgetting about the McAuliffe Minute. In <laughs> fact, you know what? Before we go... I also need to tell everybody who won last week's competition or trivia question. And so you remember in the episode when we did the question that I said, if uh, <laughs> you said D. too damn many, yeah, that D. would correct. <laughs> and so anyway, we had a number of people that uh, guessed Five, seven, nobody guessed nine. Thank you. And a shit ton of people did <laughs> put in <laughs> too damn many. Too damn many. <laughs> and so I counted all of those as correct as and with number seven. Yeah, because it's seven of them. Because you have seven. It's Alana, Joy, uh, correction, go back. It's Avery, Joy, Alana. Then we got Tyson, Carter, DeLuca, and uh, Bryson. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, this week's winner is Eric Nelson. Eric Nelson. Okay. So anyway, I'm sending him a message right now. You won. <laughs> you won. So if in case he, you know, only listened to the show one time ever, now he knows he won. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Eric. <laughs> so we have this week's question. Okay. And it's about Santa Claus. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of this. So one, folks. <laughs> the question is, should you <laughs> pretend <laughs> there's a Santa Claus with your children? <laughs> Whose answer are they gonna take it? Yours or mine? Oh, no, wait. There's three answers. Okay. Right. A is yes. B is no, and C is be a dick like Bryant. Bryant. <laughs> so and the answer is C. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to make it hard, folks. <laughs> yeah, be a dick like Bryant. <laughs> I'll accept that. I'll accept that. <laughs> 
right. Well, hey, I'm excited to see who how the answers <laughs> come in. I mean, to be a dick like Brian. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, there shouldn't even be two answers. It should be A, yes, and B, 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 B be a, a dick, dick like Brian. That, you know what? Take a B and change it to that, and that's all there is. And that's what we're going to put in the show notes. Oh, my God. Show notes. All right, man. Well, hey, fun show. Yes, sir. And next week is our four-year anniversary. Yes. Four wow. Years. What a ride. Four what years. a ride. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. so what I want to say about that also is uh, tell your friends that smoke cigars about us. Yes. You know what I mean? That's the only way we grow. Like, I spend money on advertising on a regular basis, and... I don't know if any of you ever heard any of our ads. If you heard one of our ads on another show, mm -hmm. let me know. Or am I just pissing money no, out no, the window? window. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or, you know, if there's one dude that's like, I heard it on another podcast and be like, yeah, yeah that's, that's not, not worth it, bro. That's <laughs> not worth it. But anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up this week's show. And until next time, keep smoking. the clouds when we're together just sing a song and think about sunny weather happy trails to you till we meet